Welcome to the FinQuery Focus Podcast, where we dive deep into the contract and spend intelligence queries that matter most to you. From finance, accounting, IT, and more, our experts are on deck to unpack how to optimize an organization's largest areas of spend outside payroll, which are typically leases, software, and other financial contracts. I'm your host, Shannon Matthews, welcoming you today as we discuss the important topic of data integrity. Joining us is our expert guest, Emily Fish, FinQuery's Director of Product Accounting and Operations with over 20 years of experience in the field. Emily, it's great to chat with you today. Thanks for having me today, Shannon. I'm really excited to dig into this topic with you. Great. Well, let's go ahead and get started then. So, Emily, let's just start by defining what we mean by data integrity and why it's so important for businesses. Yeah, that's actually a great place to start. Um, data integrity refers to the accuracy, uh, consistency, and reliability of data stored within a company's systems. It plays a vital role in decision-making processes and overall business operations. You know, companies rely heavily on data to make strategic decisions and if that data is compromised or inaccurate, it can have serious consequences. Yeah, it definitely seems many companies today are grappling with confidence issues in their financial data overall. And um, a recent Blackline survey actually did show that almost 37% of CFOs and 50% of accounting professionals questioning are questioning its reliability. So can you shed some light on how serious this issue really is? Yeah, those figures are alarming. <laughs> um, from an yeah. external perspective, you know, meaning outside of the company, um, inaccurate financial data can result in noncompliance, which you know can lead to penalties and potential legal issues, and it can create a general air of mistrust from financial statement users. Internally, um, it limits leaders' sight into and control over uh, company spending leading to excessive or unnoticed expenses and inaccurate financial forecasts. Yeah, that sounds pretty serious. And like you said, those figures are very alarming, especially the 50%. That's half right. of accounting professionals. So that's pretty <laughs> crazy. So what do you think, or what would you say are some of the factors that are contributing to this lack of confidence that people are having? I think one of the major issues is the massive shortage of accountants. Um, you know, I've read in the neighbor that it's in the neighborhood of about 340,000 um, in the U.S. alone. Um, so this situation not only burdens existing employees with larger workloads, it also increases the risk of errors due to reliance on unseasoned, um, excuse me, unseasoned staff um, and even interns. Yeah, that's actually the shortage of accountants. I know. I'm in marketing, and one of the things that we read about a lot is um, shortage of accountants. So that's a pretty big number. So on a side note a little bit, what would you say are some of the reasons that there is a shortage of accountants right now? Um, I think it's, you know, attributed to a few factors. You know, there's been a significant increase in the demand for accountancy services, um, driven by, you know, more complex financial regulations and a growing need for financial transparency and accountability in businesses. Secondly, um, you know, the profession is facing an aging workforce with many senior accountants retiring and not enough young professionals entering the field to replace them. And this in and of itself is a huge problem. Um, and there are a myriad of reasons why people aren't becoming accountants, um, you know, from the rigorous and expensive educational and certification requirements to, you know, the next generation's greater focus on work-life balance and the lack of work-life balance that is perceived, um, you know, in the accounting industry as being notoriously overworked. <laughs> uh, yeah. Lastly, with the rise of technology and automation, you know, some people may perceive the profession as less attractive or less stable, thinking the machines are going to replace us. Um, so these challenges collectively, I think, contribute to the existing shortage of accountants. Makes sense. So how are more complex regulatory changes impacting this predicament? Changing regulations can be complex. And sometimes, you know, that'll lead to misinterpretation and in some instances, inaccurate application. Um, if you don't understand what you're reading, how are you supposed to, you know, put it into practice? So this, of course, will 
reliability of reported financial information, and moreover, you know, continued reliance on outdated systems or manual workflows like those required in Excel add to the risk um, as they lack, you know, integration capabilities and are prone to breakdowns and errors. Well, it sounds like some things really need to change. So what would you say are some ways that leaders can improve the accuracy of their company's financial reporting? The $64,000 question. Yeah. So I think one significant step could be upskilling the existing workforce to address skill gaps. Um, You know, leaders could foster a culture of continuous learning and professional development, offering education stipends, offering time at work to, you know, take trainings um, and promoting cross-functional collaboration and improving interdepartmental communication can also go a long way. You know, I imagine that modern tools and technology play a part in this as well. Would you say that's accurate? Absolutely. Um, Investment in financial and spend management software can enhance efficiency, uh, compliance, and accuracy. All three of those things with one, you know, click of a button, let's say. (laughs) Um, Additionally, automating routine tasks and leveraging advanced analytics can significantly optimize financial operations and remove administrative burdens. All right. Well, looking ahead, what is the future of financial reporting to you, do you think? Well, you know, despite the challenges, industry leaders are working towards simplified processes and regulations that fit the current landscape. For example, the is considering a rule to simplify software cost reporting. This could significantly reduce the likelihood of inaccuracies. That sounds promising. So, um, Emily, we're, it's almost time for us to wrap up this podcast, but do you have any final thoughts that you wanted to add? I think, you know, to future-proof their businesses, leaders must remain at the forefront of innovation and continually seek to improve processes and optimization. So whether that's investing in staff development or promoting better cross-departmental collaboration or, you know, utilizing software for improved data accuracy, Financial professionals just, you know, they must take the necessary steps to regain trust in their company's data. Agreed. And hopefully after people listen to this podcast and we have some more information that we'll share in our show notes after this as well, but hopefully people will start to learn how to take those steps to regain trust in their company's data because not trusting that sounds like a pretty serious concern. So um, (laughs) anyway, this conversation has been great. So thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. It's been great chatting with you. And to our listeners, thank you for tuning in. Check out the additional resources attached in the show notes for this podcast and stay empowered, stay informed. And until next time, keep thriving and driving those big financial decisions. You've been listening to the FinQuery Focus podcast, the podcast that puts the spotlight on your finances. We'll see you next time.